Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Accustats Video Productions, we'd like to welcome you to the Accustats Straight Pool Invitational. We're coming to you live here from the Aramith Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, and we've got great straight pool action for you again today. Five of the world's greatest straight pool players were invited here by Accustats Video Productions to play a double round robin format, 75 point matches of world class straight pool. At the end of our four day competition, the player with the best overall record will be crowned our Accustats straight pool champion. So let's get right underway here. Before I do that, I want to take one opportunity to again say thank you on behalf of the entire Accustats team and Sandcastle Billiards for your great support and loyalty to helping make this happen. Thank you all very, very much. Okay, here we go. This is match number six. Our first player is from Helsinki, Finland. This gentleman has a high run of 267 balls. 14 times he's represented Team Europe on the Moscone Cup, and he's a two-time Billiards Digest Player of the Year. Sponsored by Mez Cues and Kamui, please welcome the Iceman, Mr. Mika Imanen. Thank you very much. And his opponent from Hamburg, Germany, with a high run of 326 balls. He's a two-time World Straight Pool Champion, and recently he was inducted into the Straight Pool Hall of Fame. He's sponsored by Bear Cues and Simonis. It's the machine. Please welcome Oliver Ortman. All right, gentlemen, please lag for the first break. Your timekeeper is Carl Kantowitz, and at this time I'd like to send it over to the booth to the voice of Accustats, Mr. Billy Incardona, and Hall of Famer Danny DiLiberto. Go ahead, gentlemen. We're at the Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, where the Make It Happen Straight Pool Invitational is being held. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill Incardona, and the feature match this morning is going to be between Oliver Orban and Mika Eminen. Danny, last night, at the end of the night, Mika Eminen was in a match where he needed one ball to win the match, but he also had that bonus money lulling him in to a, to a possible shot that maybe he should not have taken. Yeah, he could have won the match, but he decided to go for the bonus money. And I don't think it was such a bad idea because the balls were sitting pretty good to do it. But, of course, he lost by one point, 75 to 74. Now, that could be lingering here in this first match because, remember, it was the last match of yesterday. He's been breaking them pretty well. You know, I mean, you always are going to leave a long shot. I have different theories about all this, but they shoot so straight. See, I would, before I shot this 13, if he's going to shoot it, I would shoot the cue ball to the end rail and take two scratches. And because my opponent will do it also. Then if I make the 13, I get a bonus because the guy is on two fouls. I agree with that to a degree, and I'll explain why. Because if once he does that, if um, Eminem decides to do the same thing, he'll probably end up make uh, Orman that is with a tougher shot. So he said that this shot is not as tough as the shot I could end up with. I'm going for it now. You know, it would be a little tougher because I would put him on the end rail, but it wouldn't be that much different. You know, that was a great shot. And it's such a difficult shot to start the match with, as opposed to in the middle of the match. The, the, You're right. The degree of difficulty You're really right. goes up when it's... Oh, how you like it? He made the long one and then missed that one. Very yeah. rare. Very rare. What I was trying to say was that the first shot of the match that carries distance is a difficult shot. That same shot in the middle of a match isn't nearly as difficult. That's why I was really impressed, as Danny was as well, with, with the Ortman as he pocketed that ball so nicely, and then he ended up missing the eight in the side. Yeah, uh, it's really a freaky kind of game because he made the tough one and missed the short shot. Now, in, in regard to him, and then this is exactly what he needed to shake off that, that horrible loss last night. So if he can start out and with, with running some balls here in this match... Well, he's he lucky the 10 went down with the cue ball. 
because he would have had a tough shot. The eight ball's positioned in front of the side pocket, though he's looking at the eight now because he still needs to open up the balls that are around the foot spot. And he's thinking about possibly doing that off the eight. At least that's the impression I got when he addressed the table. You know, that's where he stopped the cue ball in a line with the angle to go into the balls. Would you do this, Danny? No, I would not at all. They go. I would go right to the six and try to pick around them because they all go. And that's exactly what he's done. He's got it. You don't go into the balls that quick because you're gambling. When they pass, fall on where they go, and that'll develop your game, folks. You know, you'll get better cue ball control. And you'll be a better player. You can't gamble on going into those balls. Something bad happens, you can't say it was bad luck. You gambled and you lost. It was bad judgment. Bad judgment. Look at this. I don't know what he has, if anything. He's, I don't know. He's the got three. the three, I believe, but I he's got know. the seven. He does have the three. It was yeah. It was no. questionable whether okay. the three butt were passed or not from my, from my vantage point. Well, it goes, but what do you think he's going to have next, Billy? He's going to have the five. He Ooh. is? Well, he's not going to have anything. <laughs> he's got the five up the corner. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, Meek is a great player, but some of his choices are a little bit suspect. But when you shoot that straight, it doesn't matter where they stop. Yeah, you make up for a lot of judgment errors when you shoot as straight as he does. Not that I'm, I'm not trying to imply that he has a, 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 makes a lot of judgment errors, but uh, let's just say he makes more than Holman. <laughs> Holman is truly the technician of this group of fine, fine players. Six in the side. What's next? You know, open them up a little bit here. See, I don't believe in that. You know, you don't open balls up that are already open. Fall on where they go. Yeah. I know it's easier to, to do it the way you're talking, Billy, but you're gambling. You're gambling. Well, you know, I mean, I really agree with what you're saying for the most part, but I don't especially agree with the balls were open that well prior to him shooting that shot. I think he needed a little separation with the balls at that oh, time. Oh, it made it all easier, but again, if you don't know which ball you're shooting next when you go into balls, it's a bad shot. But that's only uh, a matter of choice. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure there are times in in a, in, a, in a game where you're really going to have to go into balls with the the, blind. Without, without really knowing what's going to happen. You do. You know? That's and, rare, uh, but that was not one of the cases. But anyway, forget that. He's at the table, and he looks like he's going to have a break shot with the 12. That's good speed. I like That's that beautiful. shot. I like that shot. He may have to stop the cue ball right there. And which he's done. Now can he reach this shot? That's the problem. That, that with this. is the story. He looked Well, that's why he got straight in on the 14. If he had a little bit of angle, either way, he could have got closer to the cue ball now. You know, this is at the end of your stroke when you shoot this one. So he's gonna have to stretch a little bit in order to reach this shot. He's leaning and over sight it. I like the way he hit that shot. That usually, he's been hitting that shot too hard, and he winds up on the end rail, but that was perfect speed. Well, he learned from his mistakes earlier in the day yesterday. He shot a couple of those brick shots where he kind of like lost control of the cue ball. That didn't happen there. No, he's all right here. But now when he goes into that cluster, he's got to have an insurance ball. I think he can get an angle on the 10 and go into him 
with the 10 now, and he's got two insurance balls, the 8 and the 3. He's pretty flat on the 10 there now. He's no, taking no, a look he's at, got an angle. He's taking a look at the 11 now to see if the 11 is a dead ball. If the 11 is a dead ball, obviously he'll play position for that because going into him now, he's pretty flat. No, he's going into the balls. But he didn't even try. He could have shot harder. You don't have to hit him hard when you got an insurance ball. He could have went into him a little bit. Well, maybe he likes the 11 ball. No, he's going to go into him now, I believe, with the three. And hit the one. No, he's past the one, Danny. Okay. You got a bad, you got a bad vantage point from where you are. Okay. I like picking around the balls. He's looking at that 11 again. He's, this is the second time he's taking a look at the 11, indicating to me that, you know what? He likes it. He's going to probably play the 11. You think he's going to play it right now? Uh, it looks like he is. 11 ball. He's calling the 11. And he lost the cue ball a little, and therefore he doesn't have a gimme on his next shot. It looks like the one may pass, but... You know, at this stage, you need easier shots than this. But he's he's in pretty good line here. He's off the cue ball off the rail. He's able to sight the ball easily. Great shot maker. Now he may have a problem. He's got the six on the side, I believe. I don't know. He may have a problem here. I think the six goes by to 14, but mm, maybe it doesn't. I don't but, know. It looks like well, he's then got he a problem. he doesn't have anything. If the six doesn't pass, he doesn't have a shot. Oh, it looks like he may be able to make the nine. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. It's very close, and he's yeah. gotten up from the shot. Yeah, he don't. And the fifteen may pass also. I don't think anything passes, or else he probably would have already shot it. I think he's going to have to twirl this a little bit, which he he's going down on the cue ball with a. Tw he wants to twirl it. He knows he he has to twirl it. He has to twirl the shot on the nine to make it. He don't like it, but I don't think he has anything else. I think he's going to end up twirling the shot on the nine. A twirl shot. We're getting hit with a twirl shot. Now he's shooting the 15 that I said goes. But he's not playing great position. He didn't get on the nine. He's got the seven in the far corner. Yeah, with his run so far up to this point, he struggled a bit. You know, there was a couple of times when he, you know, he got out of line a little bit. And he was able to... Boy, he trickled that one in. Well, he might as well shoot to four now. And open him up real well. Ooh, another one trickled. Yeah, well, they're going in. You know, reluctantly, reluctantly, but they're, they're going in. Now, I think he's passed his mark a little bit once again which he did, but he was able to recover again. So it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy at all. Yeah, he's... Uh, he was looking at the six on the side. That's not a good shot. I think he's going to have to play shape for the five on the side or the five in the corner. Well, he's short again. He's short again. He's got the five, Billy, if he wants it. He's shooting the six. Right. He's pretty good right here. But now he's going to have to hit a rail. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's not handling that cue ball well. He's not. He's got to hit a rail now. Had he got straight in on this ball, he would have had nothing to do. Now he's got to come with good speed, too. Now he's going to have to hit this, hit this softly, which he's done. And I think he's finally got himself Fine. in line. <clears throat> i tell you what, that was a very difficult rap for him considering how he went about it. But, you know, he did a good was. job. He, he got did a good job. It. He got through it. Yeah, whenever whenever you get through a rack that, that presents as many difficulties as that rack did, it sort, of like, it sort of like gives you a little more confidence. So, therefore, you know, going into this rack, if he opens up the ball nicely... He'll be looking at a little more confident player. He'll he'll probably smooth out his play and probably get through this rack a little easier. And let's see if he opens up the balls and what type of a shot he ends up with here. Now, that you, you draw this one back as well, but you can't oh, you overdraw do. this. You do. 
Well, he's been overdrawn, but here you don't even have to draw it. Center ball will do it. That's what he did. Okay, this they, is ideal here, Danny. It's perfect. Yeah, he, this, he likes this. So, therefore, he, there's no reason why he shouldn't get through this rack smoothly because he's already struggled in the first rack, and he's done a, he did a good job, so he should use oh, that I'll as you, a... He's got to make good choices here because the balls are a little tied up. Yeah, he... I guess he can get to the 13, stop the ball, and then shoot the 10. That's a good ball to get rid of right there. Now, well, he's hitting balls. You don't have to do that. You know, he might have tied the ball up a little. Well, he certainly blocked the pocket for the 9 in this lower right-hand pocket. And he also tied up the 1 a little with that shot. So he's going to have to deal with the 1 at some point because it's in a pretty curious position and that's one of the reasons why Danny's had no reason to go into balls because you may tie them up didn't mm -hmm. really tie it up but kind of now he's on the one he yeah, he's not. okay now I wouldn't shoot this ball uh, the one's shoot a tough the ball one. I'd shoot the nine maybe nine then the one but you gotta well, get rid of the one or the six and the nine's a problematic ball as well because Limited the pocket the 9 goes into. He's opting to shoot the 12. Yeah, well, he shouldn't leave the 14 there much longer. Look at he tied balls up again, which means he can't go to the 14 yet. But he's got to get rid of the black 8 next. That's the ball he needs to get rid of now. That'll open up the pocket for both the 11 and the 7. And uh, now he's got to... Is he awkward on the 8? Can he draw it back? I think he can without hitting the balls. And he did. Now, it would be nice for him to end up with a shot on the red three at some point, maybe after pocketing the 11 and then the seven, and then stop the ball for the red three because the red three is a very problematic ball. He has to get rid of it. Actually, Billy, the 14 is a pretty big problem also. I wouldn't leave that there too long, but you got to have a ball to play position for and he doesn't have it with the 14. Yeah, I agree the 14 is problematic, but the big problem is the three, and that's what he has to work on. Ah, he's, he's falling short. I don't know. He's falling short. He's on the wrong side of the seven. Now he's going to take a look at maybe doing something with the nine. Maybe the nine next, and then the six. Yeah, it's still a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. He's going to take the cut. Well, he can shoot the six, but how are you going to get the three out of there? He's looking to see that. So he's going to leave the 14 last before the break shot. And if he can come back a little, he can get to that 14 with the three. See, that's where he's putting his tip. Yeah, he needs that angle on the three to get to the 14. He got that. Okay, he's going to be okay. He's ended up in pretty good line here. He should end up center table here. Center table is where you want to be. He's a little awkward on this shot here. He got he kind of straight. Now he's going to have to... This is a tough shot here, Danny. He's got to pound it, Billy. He's going to hit the rail with a center ball and hard. See, it might not be hard enough, though. Now, that's why he needed to be end up on center table. The shooting the three, it was a very, very important shot to get the right angle on the 14 to drop nicely for the break ball with the one. He didn't do it. Now he's awkward on the break ball. He is, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what kind of angle he has here. But he does know. have a... He does have a tremendous stroke with an eagle eye, and he's going to have to take advantage of both of those things on this shot. He's going to draw the ball and hope to have something. Well, he didn't. That's for not getting the right angle on the break shot. He may be able to reach the two. If he can, he'll be able to sight it well because he's close to it. Good shot. Watch the Where side going, pocket. Cuba. Watch the side pocket. Wow. Now, this angle sends him to either the 8 or the 11. Two possible break balls. That's too hard for the 8. 
and not hard enough for the 11. No, he got on the 11. He's got an angle on the 11, Billy, but you're doing it on the blind again. There's no insurance balls, so you're gambling. He's going to shoot it. Mm -hmm. But the eight ball was a better break ball. Now he's going to have to draw this out out yep. from the rack here. He's going to have to draw it out. 14 may go. He doesn't want it to, and that didn't. Okay, now he's back in the saddle here, Danny. He looks like balls are open quite well here. Yeah, he's going to have to go to the 8 after the 14, if he shoots the 14. I like going three rails off the 14 to the 8. He's got break shots. He just has to get through the run. He's going three rails to the 8. He would like to add it with an angle on the eight, maybe to go into the balls again because he has a lot of insurance balls. I don't think he's ended up with that angle, even if he had that in mind. Maybe, well, maybe he did have it in mind, and he's pretty straight on the eight. He doesn't have that uh, angle well, to, go, to go into the balls. He could stop right there and then go into the balls with the 15 off the cushion with the cue ball. Stop right there and, and leave that angle. Oh, boy. He's got power, doesn't he? <laughs> Well, can he roll the seven in and have a break shot with the fifteen now? I'm thinking. He, I'm thinking he, he hopes he has the shot on the seven, because if he doesn't, he's gonna have to shoot over the stack there, and that's not gonna be fun. He's got it. Well, he isn't gonna break him with the fifteen. It's getting kind of uh, thin out there for him. I think he may have to go into the balls there, Danny. He is. He's got insurance. He's got the ten. Yeah. Balls are open up. He's got a break shot with both the three and the six. Well, and there was a 50. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> we felt every bit of that 50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks like he's overrun his mark again. He's really losing well, control of that cue ball. The eight is a pretty good break shot. Can he hit the uh, three full enough to control it to the five? Or does he have to go to the nine in the side? I think he can. I think he can play the three and the five both in the same pocket. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know uh, about this. I think he has a shot on the five, but I don't know if the angle that he's left himself with on the five is conducive to drop nicely for the uh Oh, he's got for the, the 13, 9. For the 13, yeah, he's got the 9. He may end up shooting the 9 here, but he's a little off angle with the 9, too. He's got to cut the 9 to his left. So, therefore, he does have a shot on both the 5 and the 9, and they're both a little problematic. Now, you know, now, he, now he's going the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah you know, he's got a problem with this. The nine. He's, he's got to do a, a lot of extra traveling here. No, he can draw it, and he'll be fine. Which he did. Now he's got the one rail position to the six. And the six is laying a little high, and the angle seems to be a little off angle. This is not an easy shot. This is not an easy shot. He's, uh, he's, he's certainly... Gonna, yeah, he's going to go uh, two rails. No, he went one. I like that. You see how long he's in position? He could have went another two feet and still been in line. So he's all right there. I like that one rail to the brake shot. Yeah, I like it, too, because you stay in line, as you mentioned. Right. With the two with, rail... Uh, with you the cross two, it, you right. don't have a big target. Yeah, with the two rail option for position, uh, in regard to playing position, once you get in line with the two rail, you're out of line quickly. With the one rail, you stay in line. The only thing that's, that's wrong with the shot is you get further away from the ball. But at least you still have a shot and the angle. Oh, he's got a good shot. Balls. He's got a good shot here. I know right now this looks like a hanger to him. Just don't scratch cross side. Or straight in the side. What do we have? The one. You got the one. Balls are opened up. Quite well here. Yeah. He's on a run of... 57. 57. If he's able to 
finish off this rack, he'll be at 70. Needing only five balls to win the match. And which will also give him an opportunity, like he had last night, to reach the level one bonus of 100 balls. See the insurance ball? You don't have to shoot hard when you got insurance balls. And they open pretty well. It looks like everything goes somewhere. You got to shoot the seven. You got to shoot the seven, keep an angle on the three. Because the eight will go. It looks like he got pretty straight in here, Billy. Yeah, the expression on his face yeah. really tells the story here. But he did it. You know, now, if you if you think you can't get position off the three, you can shoot the two. Yeah, I like that, too. Well, let's see what he does here. He's got a little angle. Good stroke. Now, the, the cue ball's going to take off on them. No, he's got the 12 on the side, it looks like. I didn't see that ball. That'll certainly give him the ability to control the cue ball a little easier than off the two. Boy, he does a lot of work here. He didn't get good again. Now, he does have three quarters of a pocket for the 13, but he doesn't have a full pocket. He's a straight shooter. He's got no the four on the side. It. The four on the side. Does he do a play for the nine here or the 15? I go to the nine. I go to the nine here because then he can go to the 15 after that and everything will be clear. He's got to shoot it with a little speed. He did it. Now, can he roll this in and hold it for no, the No, he can't hold anything off the nine. He's going to have to shoot something well, else. Well, the eight goes in the same pocket. Two ball. Two ball, but... He, he's going to get on the nine this time. Now he's on the nine. Now he can hold this shot if he opts to shoot the nine. Oh, yeah, the rack is easy now. Ball on the 15, there's no more problem. I kind of like what he did because he eliminated the two, opening the pocket for the 14 if he needs it later. He'll probably bump the five here if he has that angle. No, he's straight in. Does he have the five now? Oh, he has the five. Okay. You're going to bump the eight? Yeah, that's what he's going to probably have to do if he shoots the five. And you really got to go into the eight and forget about Softly. the... Softly. Yeah, like he's done. Okay, that's pretty good if the eight doesn't oh. go in. Well, at least he's got a little relief with the eight. But had the eight stayed on the rail, it would have been a very tough ball to play shape off of. But since it's off the rail and in front of the pocket, he can use that as the lead ball to the break ball. I kind of like him coming off. I kind of like the other way. No, you wanted him to go off the eight to the break shot? No. Uh, well, well, this is good if, if you end up with a good angle because you still have to deal with that 14. Oh, he don't even have to hit rails if he doesn't want to. Just draw the ball. Oh, he hit a rail. He got the angle. That's 70 balls. 70 hard-earned balls. Uh, I was corrected with the score. It's 69. Yeah, Ortman it's made the first 69. shot. You remember? Ortman made and the first shot, the right, second. exactly. But he's on a run of 69. He needs six balls to win the match and 31 balls to reach the level one of the bonus, which is 100 balls. This is where he tends to shoot too hard. No, but he's learned something, man. That's good control there. Yesterday was day number one in the tournament, and you seem like you get a little overamped in day one. Day two is that, you know, you've gone through a little bit of a learning process, experiencing day one, and your game goes up. And when you're 0-2, you better start winning. Because he can wind up 6-2 and two yet. That's going to be putting him in contention if he can do it. Draw the ball softly. You got the one. See it? There you go. Good call. Yeah. Good call. Opening up the ball's 
Look oh. at this stretch. Oops. <laughs> well, this match is over as far as Ortman's concerned. He needs two balls for the match, but yeah. yet he still wants to keep that bonus opportunity alive. Sure. And he wants to increase that chance of, of, of obtaining that with playing position. I think you go to the one here. You the one's already one. gone. No, what's that on the rail? Oh, that's the five. Let me see. The, th the three ball on the rail. It's the three. Yeah, we lost our color. ending up near the side pocket close to the rail a ball that he's definitely going to have to get out of there as soon as he can but now that the four ball is positioned as a break ball now that six ball has a purpose possibly later in the run to use it as a lead ball well where it's sitting you've got to get perfect right fall on the break shot he's got a chance to do it right now you know you don't want to leave it for for the uh, key ball to the break shot. But of course, he does have the ball on the other side of the table, the 13 or the 12, and he has to be concerned about that ball as well. When you have balls on both sides of the table that are in curious positions, you know, it's not easy. He may end up leaving that six, Danny. He is. He's going to have to get pretty straight in on it. But he's in line on the 12 to get in line for the, third, the seventh to drop nicely for the six. Yeah, come back a little bit. No, he's a little straight here. He wants a little more of an angle. He is. He's going to have a long shot on the six. Well, I think Nicely he did, done. I think he did that quite well. Very well. He's going to have to stop the ball here. He's going to be end up close to the rail to shoot the break ball. Oh, wow. He, he powered he's that pocketing. in. Yeah. That's a lot of confidence when you can shoot a shot with that speed. That's on the rail. the angle, yeah, carrying the angle that the six carried and hit the center pocket. I think he's feeling really good right now. Well, he needs one more break shot for the bonus. He's on a run of 83. 14 here will give him 97. And then he'll need the break ball and two other ones after that to reach that level one bonus. Once again, opening up, opening the balls up nicely. They open very well here. I roll forward and shoot the uh, 13 in this. Well, I don't know if he can hold it, but I like getting the 13 out of there. Yeah, that 13 is a ugly looking ball. It's I think he could have got rid of it right there. What's he going to do? The combination? No, he's got the uh, 14. Well, the eight and one are sitting a little funny. He's looking to see what he's going to do with that eight. Yeah, the eight, the eight, the eight, and the one needs, they need to be uh, eliminated too. He's looking to play the billiard on the eight with left handed. <laughs> he's reconsidered, uh, I think, wisely. Yeah, I don't like that chat. Oh, he decided to go into him. He does a lot of gambling, but he's such a straight shooter that he can get away with it because he's going to make balls. Yeah, he does that a lot when he doesn't want to think as hardly as hard, excuse me, as uh, as it needs to be thought out. In certain situations. I think he get the eight out of there now. No, he's going to leave it there a while. 
I would have got the eight out of there right now. And that 12 ball or 13 ball that you would have shot earlier in the rack is still there blocking the three. You know, so uh, maybe he should uh, think about getting that 13 out of there at some point. And then go to the eight if he could. Oh, he's, now he's going into the eight and the one. He's all right now. Now the problem ball is the two. He's going to get that out of there right now. Mm. He's landed on the 50-yard line for the three and the two. Well, he'll make the two if he wants to. He's going to shoot the three and go into the balls? No, no he, I don't think he's going to. Yeah, he might. He might go into the ten here. Yeah, that's all right, but what are you going to do with that two? Now the nine. He the, almost tied things ten. up again. See, he can't go to the two until he's got pockets open to play position for. The ten ball uh, is blocking the pocket for the nine, so he's going to have to eliminate the ten after he shoots the twelve. That's skidded. That ball skidded. And when it skidded, the cue ball took another path, went into the nine. He didn't play the cue ball to go into the nine. But since the ball skidded, meaning the cue ball stuck to the object ball, it pushed it into the nine. He was so, really uh, so he, unfortunate to, see, yeah, to have he, that he happen. He calls for a cleaning of the cue ball because, you know, he was kind of straight in, so it didn't cause him to miss. Because if you skid when you're cutting the ball, you're going to miss the ball. Yeah, at least he can feel good about that. Yeah. Oops. Is he high enough? Danny, I'm going to bring this up now because yesterday we had a very similar pattern. Now it's with the 9 and the 11. Do you break him with the 11 in the side and save the 9 for your key well, wall? it depends on the angle you get on the 9. If you get straight in on it, then you do play for the side. The side's a good break. Well, he's going to leave the two last. He's going to end up on the rail. Yes, he, don't he wanna, is. He's he going to be a mile be away because he, he can't go rail. nowhere now. Or he can't go anywhere. Well, he's going to have to be satisfied with a long shot on the break shot. He's got a little angle to get closer. And closer he did, but is he going to get straight? Nope. He's got an angle. People are loving it. He's on 97. He needs three more for the bonus. Well, you know, he's run 97 balls. In and, about 20 and, minutes. Yeah, and, and, you know, there was a lot of situations when he was running these balls where there were, it was really up in the air. In other words, wow, can he do this? Can he do this? You know, well, but he's managed to get through every one of them, and here we is. Here he is at ninety-seven. It's not a finesse run, but he pockets so well that he can overcome all kinds of trouble. Now he's got a good break shot here. This one, I think you go forward. He's got an angle to hit center ball and pop it, but I like going forward off this one. I think he's going to go into the six. That's the top ball. Yeah. Well, he's drawing the ball. No. Yeah, he is. Where are you going, cue ball? Oh, he's okay. He needs two for the bonus. No, he needs one. He needs one. He's on 99 right now. He's got 98. He's got 98. You okay. were right the first time. He need, well, one out of two isn't bad. No, for you. <laughs> here we go. A little bit of a gamble here. But now this will give him the level one bonus. If he makes this and then he scratches, does he still get the bonus? No. Oh, you mean oh. if he makes the ball and yeah. then scratches? Yes, oh, I think yeah, he should. He gets it. He I gets think it. he still gets the bonus. Not that, not that that's going to happen, but it's kind of curious. Yeah. Because we've seen some strange things happen so far. Now, if he scratches here, we can take that. We can take the no. clap and reverse. <laughs> but he gets the bonus. He gets the bonus. Now it's, he's working on the level two bonus, 150 balls. And if he reaches that level, he'll be tired, too tired to spend that money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm <sure>. thinking. <laughs> sure. 
I'll tell you, he got so good on the uh, 13, I think I shoot the 13 right now. I happen to agree. I think he's in perfect line for the 13. He's got to take a look at it. He's got to take a look at it. Here's how he's taking yeah. a look at it now. That would clear everything. I up. like that shot. Yeah. I like Now he's going for the 6. I don't understand why he would go for the 6 and not the 13, unless the 13 passes. Yeah, it does. It does pass. Or the 12, he'll get, you know, he, he, he can... Either play the 12 or the 13. And now I understand why he did what he did. Okay. When's, well, is the 10 ball dead? He's going to go into the 10 now. Well, we don't have to worry about it being dead anymore. Not any longer. The 9 ball is open. He should shoot the 9. Maybe bump the 15 up. Oh, well, he doesn't need to because he's got a pocket. Now, he should shoot to 15 because this this ball here is on this side of the table. It goes right to the 10 if he shoots to 15. And all his work is up on the other side near the center table. So he should eliminate the 15 now. And then he has many options to run the balls, to run the remaining four balls at the other end. Well, he's going to shoot the ball I would consider last, the 8. Yeah, I don't understand why he's leaving the 15. He had a perfect opportunity yeah, right. to uh, to uh, shoot the 15 and then work. Because the 15 is not a good lead ball to the break ball. He had too many good balls to lead to the break ball. Well, he, he'll he go there right now. Then he's going to use the three to get to the break shot. Well, he's doing it a little differently, but he's doing it. <laughs> uh oh boy, oh boy. It, now he's got a little awkward again. He's Did he get gear. awkward on the break? Bonus run, 111. 111. High run in the, in the tournament is by Torsten Holman at 117. And he's threatening to break that here if he gets through the, the first half of this rack. Yep. He needs. Three racks almost for the next bonus part. He went to the chair to take a sip of his energy drink, which he badly needed. What's going on? He's got the seven. He's got the seven, which is the ball near the foot rail. Mm -hmm. He's looking at it now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, well. He one-stroked it. He yeah, got he, down, one-stroked yeah, it. Yeah, but he didn't have that intensity there that he needed. You know, even though that shot was a relatively simple shot, you got to have that intensity. You still have to have that drive, and that's what he didn't have, and he got totally careless with the shot. Well... He got off the Snyder. Okay, we're going to watch that miss again with the seven. Because he once stroked it. You know, look at this. It's more of a push than a stroke. No, he missed it. He missed it. All right, we're done, folks. But I know you love that. We're going to have more of it. Yeah, and that'll put uh, Eminent at... Two losses and one win, and he's climbing back into contention here. All right, we're going to close this up, and we'll be back shortly with w which which match are we going to be watching next? Harriman and Suke next. We'll be back shortly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of AccuStats Video Productions, we'd like to welcome you to the 2013 AccuStats Straight Pool Invitational. We're coming to you live here from the Aramis Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. AccuStats has invited five of the greatest straight pool players in the world to come here to compete over four days in a double round robin format, playing race, playing 75 point matches. 
At the end of tonight's play, the player with the best overall record will be crowned our Accustat Straight Pool Champion. And there are possibilities for ties and playoffs. We'll tell you a little bit more about that before we get to our next match. I'd also like to take this opportunity to once again, and we can't say it enough, how much we appreciate each and every one of you loyal and devoted AccuStats fans, not only at home, but here at ringside to help make this great event happen. Thank you all very, very much. Okay, here we go. This is match number 19. Our first player with a record of four wins and three losses from Helsinki, Finland. He has a high run of 267 balls. This gentleman is a two-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion, one of only three men in history to win it consecutively. He also holds world titles in nine-ball and in ten-ball, and 14 times he's represented the Mo Team Europe on the Moscone Cup. He recently won the 2013 Ultimate Ten Ball. He's sponsored by Mez and Kamui. Please welcome the Iceman, Mika Imanen. Thank you very much. And his opponent from Hamburg, Germany, with a record of three wins and four losses. He has a high run of 326. He's a three-time European Player of the Year. He has two World Straight Pool Championships to his credit. He has a World Nine Ball Championship to his credit. And he was recently inducted into the Straight Pool Hall of Fame. Sponsored by Bear Cues and Simonis, would you please welcome Oliver Ortman. Okay, it's going to be Mr. Ortman's break. Your referee in charge of this match is Carswell Ransom. And at this time, uh, I'd like to send it over to the booth to the voice of AccuStats, Mr. Billy Incardona, and Hall of Famer Danny DiLiberto. Your timekeeper is Carl Kantowitz. AccuStats Video Productions presents from the Aramith Simonis Arena in Sandcastle Billiards the Make It Happen Straight Pool Invitational. Along with Danny DiLiberto, this is Billy Incardona, and this is day four. There are only two matches left in the tournament, Danny. But a lot of things can happen to determine the winner of this event. But first... Another yeah. great break. Yes, another great break. is right. Look at the cue ball position almost frozen on the back rail. And I don't see a dead one. Getting back to the possible playoff, which we could have a possible playoff, but only if Holman loses against Zuke in the next match. But as far as Inman's concerned... He must win in this match to have a chance to go into a playoff. But if he loses in this match, if Suke should happen to beat Holman in the next match, it'll be a playoff between Holman and Suke. Eleven ball. Eleven ball. He's already taken his extension for this rack. Now he has to hit that cue ball accurately in the center to get a true roll so he can increase the accuracy of the shot, which he wasn't able to do. But he may have, I don't believe so. I thought he may have gotten away with it. But he's allowed He's got the seven Portman at the table with a shot in the seven. With a high ball with no English, he'll go to the three in the side. Except he cut it. He's got the 11 now. He might have the two. Yes, he, he very could have, uh, well have the two. He's going around the table now to take a look at it. If he does have the two, I look for him to play the two. Now he's looking to see where the cue ball is going to go, what type of action he's going to get after pocketing the two. He'll be able to determine then what type of stroke is best used to get the best action possible and to come up with a shot after the breakout. Two. He's got the eight ball in the lower right-hand corner. Or the 14 if he wants it. Or the 14 in the side. Danny's very quick on picking out those side oh, yeah. pocket shots. The... the Particularly the old school straight pool players realize that they pick those side pocket shots out right away because they're so important. You have to really understand the importance 
of playing balls in the side. Well, he's looking at the three ball. I really love the way Ortman plays. He's a power straight pool player. He likes to run into balls and mix them up. He's got a great stroke, excellent shot maker. And he doesn't take much time. Not at all. I like that. He's requesting that the cue ball gets cleaned. Because he's had a few skitters that were very fatal. Matter of fact, in his last match, a ball skidded on him or else he may have run 75 and out or even possibly reached the level one of the bonus, 100 balls or possibly even more than that. But a skid took it all away from him. It's 70. He ran 70 and caught a skitter. Got the one. Six balls positioned to the right of the rack. Nice position for a brick ball. The nine ball on the other side positioned very nicely also for a brick ball. All balls are spread nicely over the table. This rack shouldn't present any problem for Ortman, particularly considering how well he runs balls. Oh, that was a little weak. He's got the five, but he would have liked to have been straight in on it because they'll have better control of the cue ball. Nicely executed. Notice how he slowed up that cue ball by elevating. Perfect line for the 15. He's going to have to go down and get that 11 at some point. I would think that, uh, you know, it didn't, and also that 10 ball was positioned in the center of the table awkwardly, I might add. He may play 14, 6, and then 11, 10, maybe. I don't know. That 10 ball is really an awkward ball out there, Danny. Well, I think right now he'll go to the 11. Yeah, then he has to go from the 11 to the 10. Like I said, the 10 ball is in the... Yeah, the 10 ball position in the center of the table. He's got to get straight in on that 10 ball for the corner pocket. Yeah, he's got the angle to do it off this shot. He wants to attain that straight angle on the 10. Good enough. Then all he'll need to do is stop the cue ball for position for the 13 in the side. Stop it there. Perfect line for a break. Which he's done quite nicely. Looks like even it looks like the nine ball is a little high on the rack, which means that the cue ball should hit on top of the rack somewhere with a high ball. Is that right, Danny? Yeah, but I don't think he's going to hit a high ball. And he could have had a little better angle than this. You know, he floated forward, and it's a little straighter, which means the cue ball is not going to have full weight on the pile. But he's he's going to stroke this. I like. Uh, high ball and glance off the pile and go two rails out to the middle. But he likes to hit it low and hard. Oh, he did it the way I called it, finally. I've been calling high ball now all week. It seems like most of these players, particularly the European players, like to draw off the break. Whereas the old school... I like that shot. Yeah, old school American players like Danny... Not that it's wrong or right. They prefer the high ball. Yeah, much better control to get to the middle. You know it's going to the middle. Low ball, you don't know if it is. It could wind up in the end rail. Okay, does he have an angle to get out of this? I think he's going to play the 12 here. He's looking at the 2, but I don't believe he's going to play the 2. I definitely believe he's going to play the 12. Yeah can do some damage to the pile. 17. 
Yeah, he put a nice stroke on the ball, assuring him a nice breakout and freeing up quite a few balls from the stack. Now they're relatively open, and a player of his caliber shouldn't have any problem finishing out the job here, at least not in this, at least for this rack. But yet he doesn't have a break ball, Danny. Not yet. No, but he's got time. He's got 11 more balls on the table. He can make a break shot right here. Do you see him bumping the eight out there, Danny? Not really. I like him hitting the five, knocking the six out, and having the eight next. You see the shot? Yeah, that's the insurance ball with the yeah. ops to play it in that fashion. I, I like it that way. But he might do it differently. Well, could he knock the seven out and still have the eight for insurance? Oh, he's pretty low on the five. I don't think he'll even contact the seven if he no, plays he the five. No, he might not. He can shoot soft and he will hit it, but maybe not the way he would like. He's playing the six in the side. He'd like to draw back slightly, giving himself a better angle on the five to knock that seven out. And, and then he got it. They don't have the eight as the insurance ball. That's the shot right now. Roll it and knock the seven out and have the eight. Now he's got the eight or the ten. Yeah, we'll maybe the ten it. is better because he's over the top. And the eleven passes. It. No, I don't know if the eleven passes the thirteen into the corner. No, he pocket. might only have the eight. Well, he has the ten, but since the eleven doesn't pass into the pocket, he's shooting over. He's opting to play the eight. Yeah, he would like to get rid of that thirteen now. Yeah, roll the 13 in. 13 ball. To get to the 10. 10, 11, 4, 15. That could, have, that could be a possible way. It looks pretty easy that way. He could play 10, 11, 15, 4, but I don't like that way nearly as much as I like the other way Danny described. 10, 11, 4, 15 seems to play much more natural. Staying a slightly under the 4, making sure the cue ball goes on top of the 15 after pocketing the 4. Yeah, get that little angle to go to the 15 inside. Perfectly struck. He's got the correct angle. Now the cue ball will drift above the 15 and he'll be able to pocket the 15 and stay near that cushion. In the corner. In the corner, exactly. Yeah, I would have liked an angle and played it inside, but no big deal. Perfect. Perfect is right. Little Perfect. Soft draw here, he'll be perfect. Soft draw, perfect is right. He'll be close to the seven ball. Beautiful. Yeah, he'll have a nice sight for this brick ball here, Danny. That's, that's really textbook right there. Well, Perfect. Folks, keep it in mind, Mika, for him to have any chance to win this tournament, has to win this game. And it's tough to win from the chair when your opponent is running balls. Orban has really played a superb tournament, winning his first two matches. Then following that, he lost his next two but he really didn't have much to say about, about match three and four. He only had one shot in each of those two matches. He's going to pound this one. Nice High stroke. again, Billy. Nice stroke. High again. Nice stroke. Yeah. Ball's opened up very nicely. The one ball's positioned mm. to the left side of the rack. Barely I think in, he in, can draw the two and play the five next, and that'll take care of that little cluster. Yeah, he's going to get good on the five. Oh, he shot it now. That's good. Look at the cluster. There is no more cluster. Ten ball now positioned on the left side of the rack. An ideal for a nice break shot. The problem ball is the 13 ball, I believe it is. Oh, the 12 ball positioned on the rail that the three ball and ten ball are on, or close to. That's the problem ball. That's the ball he's standing over now. He's going to have to get to that ball soon. 
better soon than later. But I'd like for him to get to the 13 on his next shot. Is he going to go into the three? Yep. Okay. Now he's got to get that 13 out of there. That's an ugly ball. Which he's attacking it now. Actually, it's the 12, Billy. The 12 ball. It's, it's okay. Thank you, Danny. We knew what we were okay. calling. Thank you. You're so generous not to have, you know, been too tough on me. You must want me for something later on. <laughs> I can't bite you anymore. <laughs> Three balls positioned very nicely for the lead ball to the 10. Yeah. He looks like he's going to go forever. The other problematic ball, obviously, is a 13 position near the upper left-hand corner. He should think about getting on that ball next. 36. Or maybe the four in the side in the 11, then the 13. You have four in the side, 11 in the side, 13 or 6, 13. Can he go forward here without hitting the 11 and go right to the 13? He's yeah, not, is he going to do it? Yeah, I think he can. Yeah, but the 11 is a bad ball, too. Clear that ball off. 11 ball, you know, that's in the center of the table. No need to have okay. that there. 11, 6, 13. Okay, 13. 13 right now. Yeah. I like, I like yeah, really, the, the 13, 6, 8, 3, but I don't know if he can do that now. He's going to have to go twice cross table here or else just kill it there for the 6. Twice cross table is the better way. That gives him a shot on the eight well, or the six, either one. Oh, he's fine. Eight, six, three. Now, uh, he's moving right along. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he sure is. Now, he's falling a little bit low on the six. Not much, but a little bit. He can hit it on the full side and control it. You know, when I say full side, he can shoot it. Right through the right side of the side, and that'll control it. I think what, he's, what he really wants to do, I think he wants to go, uh, go down table and back up table for position for the three. Even though it's a lot more traveling than he wants, I think that he really needs to get on the other side of that three ball to assure himself a good breakout with that ten. So he may go down table and back up here. And that's, that's what, what he's he did. done. A Pretty bit, good call, but he went too far. A little bit harder than he wanted, but can he roll it here? I mean, he might be able to roll this in. Maybe. He rolled it. Hopefully it rolls straight, and it does. You really have to like the way he started off this match, 42 balls with a beautiful, beautiful shot for the breakout rack number three. I mean, rack number four. Yeah. He's run the first three racks off of a uh, imminent miss off the break. We may see uh, a big run here, Danny. He certainly is capable of it, especially when he's running around like this. This is another high ball, I believe. Yes, it was. Where three are you ball. going? Three ball. He's got the three oh. ball. Maybe not. Maybe not. No. Nope. It looks like he's straight in on the 12 ball. Is that the 12 ball down there? He also has the six yeah, in the that's side. That's the 12, Billy. Now, that three ball is a ball that he really needs to address. Well, where the 12 is, he'll get to the three. Yeah. He's got an angle on the nine right now to get to that 12 ball. And then he can take care of the three and get back to the five. He's got the angle right now. Go right to that 12. Don't leave it there much longer. Yeah. There are certain five. balls that are positioned no, down he's table. not going to do that. I like him shooting the nine. 45. Well, he can do it now. There are certain balls that are positioned down table that are more problematic than other balls. And I think that three ball is a... Very problematic ball because you really can't do much off of the three ball, so therefore you really have to move it out of there, pocket it. He'll play 9, 13, and then 12 possibly. No, he's, this is a good chance to get rid of that 12 and play the three in the same pocket. No, I don't like that, Danny. Well, yeah, he's going to shoot tough. all the balls that he can get position from off the three.
You know what he what he may do? He may play. Uh, he may play at last to get to the eleven. That three ball. You see it? Yeah, that's possible too. He's got to get that seven out of there. That blocks the pocket for the fifteen. But I really don't like playing shape off of a ball like the three ball, even if, even though it's somewhat aligned to play shape for the 11 because it's on the rail. I don't like that at all. As long as he has a little angle, there's no problem. And the way he's moving around the table, Danny, I think that's exactly what he plans to do. He's run 50 balls. And he's showing no indication that he's worried about that 13-3. Well, or that 12 3. If the 12 wasn't there, the 3 would be a problem, but he's got a ball to get to the 3 with. I'm not worried about that. 15 ball. Well, there's no question that's exactly in his plan, but how are you going to deal with the 1 here? He's got to get there now, I believe. Yeah. Well, he's going to get to the 1. Oh, well, he's going to get rid of these balls. I, I, don't, I think it's a bad pattern. <laughs> You know, those should have been the last two to get to the 11. Yeah, I think he should shoot the one here. Yeah, and get on the, uh, the 13. Yeah, I think he should shoot the one. But he's going to call for a clean cue ball. He's really going to take a look at this because he's really awkward on the 13 or the 12, whatever ball that is. Well, he's got the one, and all he's do is draw it back. I mean, you can visually see the pattern shooting the one, providing you draw back for the for the uh, the thirteen. But if you play the uh, thirteen now, the pattern becomes a little more clouded. I like shooting the one here, draw back for the thirteen, and then up for the twelve three, and then you got your break ball. That's what he's going to do. Nice stroke. Beautiful. He can go one rail now with a hair right hand angle. It's not much because you don't want to lose that angle. You want to be straight in on that 12, which he did. He's fine here, Billy. Yeah. Now he wants to make sure he, he, he gets an angle that plays natural to the 11. Now he's going to go two cushions to the 11, Danny, I do believe. Yeah, well, now that he got this little fuller angle, you're right. He doesn't have to, really. He can still go perpendicular to the 11. Yeah, I kind of like one cushion to the 11 with a little steeper angle. But he's going to go two cushions to the 11, and you can't Perfect. argue with that. 56 out of the gate. Looking strong, Danny. Looking strong. Yeah, I agree with you. We're liable to see a real big run here. Ortman is very due to do the, you know, get a high run. If you notice, he has really opened the balls up well that every time he's gone into them. Well, he hit them high. This one, he's got to draw, Billy. You don't go forward on this one because you could scratch off that end ball. And I've concluded after watching this straight pool tournament that the break is such an important part of playing a winning straight pool. I mean, if you can open up the balls and control that cue ball off the break. He He's drawing really, this one. Really increase your oh, watch he hit that it kiss. High watch again. the kiss. I'm surprised. Look at the balls tied up. He's got the six. He's got some work here. Let's take a look at that one ball out of the rack, Danny. It looks like that one ball may be playing pretty good. I, and maybe he'll take a look at it now. He should take a look at the one, walk a little further around and take a look at that one because I think it's laying pretty good. Especially considering that the balls are haven't broken well, that one ball will really open up the rack. Now he's looking at the pink four. He hasn't even taken a look at the one yet. Fifty-eight. 
So he's got his eyes glued on that four, Danny. He's made up his mind. He's going to put all his eggs in that basket, cinching the eight, drifting down about a foot and a half, ending up for a position on the pink four to open up the balls. Big shot coming up here. Very nice speed. Perfect. Very nice speed. This shot isn't automatic. This is a big shot right here. And he's going to cut it, cut it thinly, and open up the balls. And uh, this is a, a shot that'll definitely. It'll open up most of them, but don't forget, we still got the 5 7 kind of tied up. This is a shot that'll definitely create some offensive options after this. Nice stroke. He don't want the one to come out. The 13th bounce is in front of the uh -oh. side. Oh, this isn't real good. He does have a 9-1 combination. The 5-7 are still tied up, and he doesn't have a break ball. A lot of work in front of him. He might shoot the 14. Mm, he might, but uh, I shoot the 13 in the side before that. Well, he's over the top that way. Yeah, but at least all he got to do is make contact. Good shot. Very firm bridge there. He doesn't have a break ball, and the 5-7 are still tied up, so therefore he's got to do some creating soon but here. If he stops right there on the 14, he can break those two up with the one. He can go into him with the one right now, Billy. The one ball? Yeah. The one ball's here. No, too yeah. thin. Too thin. Too you thin. You think so? Absolutely. Too thin. I don't know. Oh, I, I know for a fact. It's too thin. I can have a much better look at it than you. This will be nice. Nicely. Nicely executed shot. Now, he's created a break ball. He's, he's uh, remedied the one problem, and that was uh, creating a break ball. He has that with the 15. Well, now he has to work on the 5-7. Well, he can go from the 10 to the 9 and get a fuller hit on the 1 and then open those two. Get straight in on the 9 and you'll love it. He has the angle on the 10 to do it. He'll fall on the 9 straight in. You know what... Well, I was going to say maybe he could play the one and play shape for the nine and then break him off the nine. Oh, this where, is better. Where the one was an insurance ball. This is better. Because he's going to have a fuller angle on the one to go into those two balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, he's good on this one. It's very See, difficult. He's trying to figure out where he wants to be on the one to hit those two balls. It's going to be very difficult. I, I think you're seeing the position of the one different than I see. This is well, a difficult breakout off the one. Oh, he broke him with that. He tried to. Yeah. Well, that was a bad time to miss that. Now the one is really thin. Hmm. It's yeah. not easy. If that one was another six inches higher, then I totally agree that would be a, a good ball to break up the 5-7, but it's just kind of low, creating much more of a yeah. problem. Well, he went at him just now, and he almost got him, but that doesn't count. Now he's going to try it off the one. He's got a much better angle now. Yeah. But still, this shot doesn't play automatic. He still has to strike this very accurately and with good action. And the position is not automatic. But he should stroke it. He should really stroke this ball. Don't be afraid to stroke this one, which I'm sure he's not. That's that's a stroke. That's a stroke. Beautiful shot. Yep. Beautiful shot. Well, the people agree with you. How could you not? That was a great shot. That was a beautiful shot. And what suspense? He waited that long, but, uh, you know, he didn't like it, and he, didn't, he you know, that's Better the way it came down. Better late than never, Billy. Absolutely. 
Yeah, he's playing beautifully. This this will give him 70 balls. 70 balls. Oh. Oh, he's fine. He may have to do a little extra traveling here, Danny. Yeah, he might have to go to the end rail. And he's got to spin it with inside left English, too. So, therefore, this shot is problematic. Spin. I think just high ball. You don't need no, all that English. definitely needs English on this shot. Well, let's see. He there got it, goes. it. There he goes. Is he too fast? Is he too fast? No. He's all right. He's got he's a thin a head. a little too fast there. I don't think he's got a shot. He does not have a shot. He was too fast. He hit it with that speed because he wanted to make sure that he followed through that th followed through that ball, and he's lost his uh, he's lost his market here uh, with the brick ball. I don't think he needed all that English. I think high ball alone would have been close enough. No, he needed the English because it was... It, well, look as the English did to him. Well, the speed it did it to him, not the English. The speed of the shot he hit it with. Well, he stopped on 70 balls. That was what he did his last game, too. Matter of stopped fact, you're right. 70. Deja vu. 70's not a good number. Maybe you should take a scratch. <laughs> He's looking at the cut, Billy. If he cuts this in... I oh, know. He, he can, I don't know if this is possible to cut this in, Danny. He's looking at it. You know what's good about it? He will break them. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Well, he's going to play it. He's going to hit the paint. If he makes this shot here... The people are going to howl. I think I'm going to sign him up. If he can make this shot here... He's grinning away because he knows he wants to shoot it. The problem with this shot, it may not even reach the pocket. Maybe make it kissed Billy, out. Billy, I don't the... think you're seeing it real good. Uh, I'm seeing it yeah, pretty this good. This ball is going to go in. This is going to go in. But not if he doesn't shoot it. He uh, motioned to the referee, Cosmo. Please don't move. This is just too important of a shot. Oh, oh you're right. He cut it very thin, and it still wasn't enough. 70 balls. 70 ball run. Now Mika Eminem. He needs to do something and do it in a hurry. Yeah, he's got to win this game to be, have a chance for a playoff. The nine balls position near the side pocket on the rail. Hm, ugly ball. But first... He's got to clear off some balls before he gets to that. The one ball will lead him to that ball. Okay, go get that five and uh, seven out of there right now. You don't need to fool with it. And then drop on the one and get rid of the nine, possibly. I don't know. Maybe That's just a thought. Because there's just so many different problems out there. I don't know if he's going to attack that one now or not. He's got the 6, 3, and 14 below the foot spot there. Those are also ugly balls. He may drop on the 1 and then play shape for the 9. No, he's not going to do that. Now he's going to play the combination 11-4. Yeah, he's definitely looking at it. He's lining it up. Combination four ball. Four. No problem. Okay, he's now, got a few combinations. He might shoot the green six here and go into the nine. Well, how about just playing position for the nine? Well, he can shoot the green six and go toward the nine. He can't scratch. The one's right there. Well, he can draw past the nine and shoot it in the corner with the six. That too, but I think he should play the six and go toward that air area of the table. I think he will, he's very productive with that shot. Yeah, he's got a good chance to go to the nine right now. Yeah, he's got to go toward the nine here up with the cue ball. 
Now he's going with a high ball. I don't particularly care for this. He's going to try to move some balls there. Well, that's okay, but at least he got rid of a problem with, with the cluster. So therefore, he was productive with the shot. Every time you go to the table, you had to have some pro productivity, and that's, that's what it was there. But that 1-9 is still there, and it's, it's glaringly ugly. He might uh, go behind the one here. Nope. He's fallen short of the mark there. Okay, he could draw back for, or follow two cushions for the nine here. Now, if he doesn't get the nine, he'll get the one. Okay. Now the 12 ball is, is I, I think I would uh, maybe try to follow up, maybe get that 12 out of there next. Now he's going for the 14. But that 12 ball is a bad ball too. It really isn't a good ball to fall on the 11 with, so I think I get rid of it next. I've got to get rid of that 12 now. It's really a bad ball to fall on the 11. Now he's going to have to play underneath the 11, and that's not really ideal here. But at least he can get close to the 11 and play the 11 of the far corner. Something he didn't want to do, but I think he's best. It's best if he does. That's what he's doing. He's got a good angle now. Oh, he got perfect. Wow, he got pretty good. He got good on this. Maybe a little straighter than he wanted, but you know what? That's still good. Just go ahead and shoot it in. Forget about dwelling on this. Shoot it in. Shoot it in with a forced follow. You can go up about three inches with the shot. Hit it with a little speed. Or maybe you just roll it if you're facing, if you have the angle that you're cutting it to the left, you have to roll it then. And that's good. That's a good shot. Pretty good. And his sponsor, eminent sponsor, should be proud of him, Mez Cues. Of course, Hortman sponsors Simona's Cloth, and we're playing on the Diamond Pro-Am 9-foot pool table with Simona's 860 Cloth Aramis TV balls. Yeah, you really can't uh, get it any better than this. You know, you got the best balls, the best cloth, the best table, and the best players. I mean, this is really a treat. This is a special performance here for all you people watching it, all you make it happen people, everybody around the world, the globe watching uh -oh. it. Once again, he uh -oh. was... Uh-oh, he, he, he again hit the break shot a little weak. Let's take a look at that blue two ball. I think he may have got saved. That two ball looks like it may be on, Danny. He's going to take a look at it now. Nah. Nah, the 15's you, it's very, over kissing. very close. It's very close. It, it's, it's close enough for him to well, take a good look at it. Keone Young, you're one of our Make It Happen supporters. Here I know go. you're watching. I had to mention you. And, of course, Dennis Walsh, my other good friend from Illinois. It was that, Billy. You were right. Yeah, but he should have played cue ball there, Danny. If, if, you figure, if you're going to shoot the shot, play cue ball. You know, he didn't. That's what I always tell people. When you shoot a dead one, play position for something. Okay, this shot here on the three ball obviously requires an accurate hit. Oh, boy. He doesn't need a bridge. What a good shot this is. Except he didn't make it. It was just too tough. Okay. We got a couple more sponsors. Make it happen, supporters. Gardner Washburn, Bill Wallace, Brad Wagner, John Turner, John Troy, 
David Threadgill, Bill Tennant, Bob Taylor, and Ken Stanley. Thank you, guys. Orban playing for four balls. He was a spoiler. He spoiled Eminem's chances of a playoff. Yep. This is the end of Eminem for winning this tournament. But I tell you what, all these great champions really, really played superbly this week. We've seen some fantastic pool in this tournament. Eminem threw in the towel. Okay, the next match coming up, I think in about 20 minutes, it's going to be between Suke and Homan. If Suke defeats Homan, then he will win the right to play Homan one final game for the championship. We'll be back in 20 minutes.